Hello, amigos, and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Words Pride Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. How are you guys doing this morning? I hope everybody is great. Uh, today, I had a really good day, productive day. Got up early, uh, went to the track, got together with all my fighters. They're at fight camp right now. We're getting ready for a good season this year. Here in Miami, Florida, there's a lot of tournaments, a lot of fights coming up. So I'm trying to get my fighters uh, up to speed, in shape. And when you're uh, a boxer, when you're somebody that dedicates his life to the sport, you got to be training all the time. Yes, you got to take some breaks, but always try to stay in the gym, keep motivated, be committed, which is more important than anything else. Like I was telling the guys today, you can't expect to see results if you train once or twice a week. You got to train almost every day, at least to keep uh, in shape. So in case a tournament comes up, uh, you know, some kind of, of uh, card that comes up, you guys are ready. You guys are going to be in shape. You guys are doing sparring. You guys are training. We're doing all the road work. We're doing all the calisthenics, uh, body weight exercises, everything needed and working on technique everything needed in order to become better fighters and to be tip-top shape all the time all right guys today we're going to talk a little bit about the future of teofimo lopez what would what would i do or what would you do i know what i would do but <laughs> what would you do and i want to hear your comments if you were uh teofimo's Teofimo Lopez, trainer, his dad or his mentor, whoever is training him, whoever uh, catches, uh, you know, listens to, whoever Teofimo listens to more. I don't know if he listens to more than that to his dad or he doesn't listen to anybody but himself. I'm pretty sure there's, there's some, some kind of mentor or some kind of figure that he listens to. Is it his manager? Is it money? What is it? But uh, in my opinion, what I would tell Teofimo Lopez is to seek redemption. Seek redemption. And I'll tell you why. There's been a lot of fighters in the past that have lost and come back. There's been a lot of fighters that have lost in the past and losses has destroyed them. There's a lot of fighters that won and look bad and retired because uh, those victories were either not earned, were, were uh, very close victories, or the criticism was so much that these fighters decided to maybe have one or two fights more and then retire, all right? So uh, there's several options there. If I was in Teofimo's corner, if I was, let's say, his confidant, I would tell him, Teofimos, you got to seek redemption, all right? Uh, your mouth kills you, man. Your comments are killing you, are killing all the prospects, are killing your fan base, are destroying your fan base. You got to think before you talk. And I'm saying this because uh, I, I've i been thinking about Teofimo Lopez for a while, and I know he deserves a lot of criticism because of his big mouth and, and the way he addresses people, the way he's talked about blacks in the future, in the past, the way he's talked about uh, Latino, Puerto, Puerto Ricans, uh, the way he's talking about what he said the other night at the interview after his poor, pathetic performance against uh, Jermaine Ortiz, which I believe had uh, won this fight, which I believe won this fight along with a, a thousands of other boxing fans around the world. He addressed the public when they were booing, he addressed them and he told them, you know, suck my D. And you don't say that to your fans that come to see you. You don't say that to people that are there to watch a good fight. Then um, after the fight, he was interviewed and I actually posted that 
interview on my last episode, he said, they asked him, so Teofimo, what do you think? How do you think you did? Oh, 10 out of 10, man. I did 10 out of 10. I did everything I needed to do in order to beat this guy. I, I hit him with the right shots, blah, 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 blah. And then the rest is history. That's a lot of nonsense. So redemption. Can Teofimo Lopez redeem himself? And in order to redeem himself, who should he fight next? It can't be a soft fight. It can't be the fight with uh, Terrence Crawford that he wanted. Nobody wants to see that. Some people would like to see, you know, Teofimo, Teofimo's mouth shut by someone like Terrence Crawford. But Terrence Crawford made some comments and, and, and at uh, Twitter comments, and you know what he said. He, he actually said these are comments that actually, you know, show the that. Crawford is not interested in a fight with Teofimo Lopez. Nobody will watch it. First of all, we all know Terrence Crawford would, would kill this guy. Uh, his ability is a lot more. It's it's uh, it's tenfold better than Teofimo's. He showed a lot of bad things and bad habits and uh, poor footwork and, and uh, knowledge of basic fundamentals on his fight the other day. He's very athletic and everything else that I've discussed in the past, but he, he lacks some of these things that he needs to go back and work on. So again, let me go back. All right. I'm jumping from one thing to the next. What would he do next? And I said redemption, right? Who can Teofimo redeem himself against? All right. I said, forget about Terrence Crawford. Right? Who's fighting next? There's a fight between Haney and Ryan Garcia for April. So he could fight the winner of this fight in order to redeem himself. Or he could fight later on down the line against the winner between Suriel Matias and Liam Paro from Australia. So he's got those opportunities all right in order to redeem himself if you want to fight matias later he would have to beat one of these guys or maybe lose a close decision against one of these guys then go against matias but he needs to stay active he needs to keep his mouth shut he needs to seek some therapy he needs somebody that is mature and enough and I don't know, I, I believe his dad, when I see him, I believe his dad is doing that. He's trying to tell his son, hey, man, shut the hell up. Although his dad's got a big mouth too, so I don't know. Somebody's got to intervene. I feel bad in a way for Teofimo, but in the other way, uh, I don't. Because he's brought this upon himself. Nobody respects this guy anymore. When you talk so much shit, when you demean other people, who you constantly are saying you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, the greatest fighter since Muhammad Ali. Bro, those are big words. You gotta, you gotta, if you talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. You know that old saying, he's not walking the walk. He actually lost this fight. He lost against Sandra Martin. You know, he beat the hell out of uh, Josh Taylor, but Josh Taylor, I think he's overrated. I think uh, pretty sure that Matias would have destroyed him. Devin Haney would have destroyed him. So those are the options. Now, I'm forgetting to say one more option. Back to so-called retirement. Back to so-called taking a step back thinking about his life, you know, getting some therapy and, and think about his future. Okay, he's got a kid now. That's got to be a priority. He's got a family. 
And that's very important. That's something that actually motivates you. So there's coming back. There's ways of the Ophimo to come back. But he's got to do all these things in order to gain that respect from the public again. He lost a lot of respect this past weekend, guys, or this past Thursday. Lost all the respect. And a lot of people were laughing. We're saying, there you go. Karma's a bitch, ain't it? Keep on talking shit. And if he continues on his uh if he continues on his crazy ways of expressing himself without knowing and without any thought about repercussions, because every action has a reaction. And every word that you say has a reaction too. Especially when you're a public figure, figure. There are things that you say that have big ramifications and actually can either raise you up in popularity or destroy you in a second. Remember how things are nowadays, guys. One slip up and you're done as a person, as a public figure. As someone who it might be a movie star or an actor or a singer, something bad that you say, some slip, slip ups, and you're done in your career. This guy, same thing can happen to this guy. All right, I know there's a lot of Teofimo fans out there, but it's like the same thing. These are brain dead people. The fanatics. I'm not talking about the fans. There's a lot of people that like Teofimo, and I used to be a fan of his when at the beginning when I saw him fight. All these guys, I want to fight the best, old school. I said, yeah, hell yeah, I like that. That's what I want. I want to see people who have that old school mentality of warrior mentality of the best fighting the best. But he, he's, he's not going to be doing that. All right. If he wants to do that, he's got to clean that 140 pound division. There's a lot of good fighters in that, in that weight category. So again, guys, tell me what you think. Is Teofimo Lopez dead for the sport? Can you put an RIP on his boxing tombstone? Rest in peace for Teofimo Lopez. Is this the end of the takeover? Can he become the undertaker? Come back from the dead. Get up from the ground. Well, it's up to him, guys. It's really up to him. He's got to mature. He's got to respect. He's got to apologize to the public. And that would be the number one thing. In order to heal, you have to admit your mistakes. You can't continue. What did Albert Einstein used to say? Definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's what this guy's doing. Maybe he's, he's, think, he's thinking as well, let them hate me. At least they're going to watch me. They're going to be watching me, you know, because they want to see me knocked out. That doesn't help, man. That doesn't help your spirit. So, um, please comment. Let me know what you guys think about the future of Teofimo Lopez. Did his mouth, did his comments really destroying, are really destroying his career? Or is his mouth and his comments and his bravado just bullshit and he's just doing it for marketing purposes? Or is this guy somehow you know, have problems, emotional problems, and needs therapy ASAP. I don't know, guys, but it's not looking good for Teofimo Lopez. I hope he gets his shit squared away. I hope he really uh, rebounds. And if he's a fighter that wants to fight the best, like he says, he's the takeover, he's a new face of boxing, all this other shit, and he believes that he won this fight, fight Matias. 
I don't think he wants any part of Haney because Haney is the type of fighter he's going to give him a problem. I mean, Haney's going to is going to blank this guy. He's going to he's going to give him a you know a lesson, a boxing lesson. He's going to give him boxing lessons. He's going to stay away from him and 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 and, and pound on that face all night. Might knock him out too. Matias is the kind of fighter he he. He could face. Matias is a come forward fighter. He says he's got no skills, that he's uh, one dimensional, which is basically what Teofimo Lopez showed on his fight on Thursday. He's one dimensional. No footwork, no ability to cut off the ring, no ability to, to overcome, adapt, and improvise. None of these things. So, again, guys, please. Uh, comment, answer these questions. What's next? What's in the future for Teofimo Lopez? Is he dead for the sport? Rip, rest in peace on his boxing tombstone, or is he the undertaker in what he says? And that will let me know whether this guy is, is done in the sport of boxing, or this guy, you know, is somebody that's going to learn his lessons because that's sometimes you learn from defeat and this was a defeat you can tell the the people you know you can tell uh, these judges can can say hey this guy won but people know otherwise everybody knows otherwise this guy lost that fight all right anyway guys this is all for now it's saturday uh, it's a great, beautiful day here in Miami. I'm looking forward to relaxing the rest of the day. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Comment. Put your questions here. We're almost at 1,000. Like I said uh, on my last episode, we're almost there, guys. Just a little push more, and we're almost there. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Until next time, have an excellent day. God bless you all, and peace.